going live, gonna talk about best workout equipment for small, tiny spaces. Gonna talk about what kind of workout equipment you should buy for your tiny spaces. Hey yo, what's going on? I'm Coach Melanie Black and today we are going to answer the question, what exercise equipment should I get for my tiny space? For my small, minuscule living room or for my awesome, sleek, minimalist lifestyle. I don't want my workout equipment to take up a whole bunch of room. What do I get? That depends on a few different things and we're gonna find out which workout equipment at home small space workout equipment is best for you. We're going to uh, give you the pros, the cons, the different types of my top three picks. But let's get the first one out of the way real fast here. I won't include it as a piece of workout equipment, but the very first thing that you're gonna want in your tiny space for workout is space, okay? Make sure that you have an amount of space cleared out in your home that is at least the, uh, the size of two yoga mats, okay? Now, flooring can also be important, so you may want a yoga mat, depending on what kind of floor. You wanna be able to get down on the floor, get up off the floor. Now, once you have space and a floor that you can get down and off of, congratulations, you have everything you need to work out at home. Now, body weight is great, but you wanna know what equipment to get beyond that. Okay, so let's say you have the space already. You say, okay, I've got a space that is at least the width of two yoga mats and I am ready to take the next step, the next level of commitment to my awesome body and I'm gonna get it some gear. What do I get workout equipment wise? Let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, let's do a quick, real fast, what not to get. What we don't wanna get, obviously, barbells take up a huge amount of space. I would skip the barbell if you got a small space, even though I love them. Uh, skip the big cardio equipment or even the compact ones. Anything that is a single use, a uh, single function type of equipment we want to avoid if we're being space conscious. So no treadmills, no bikes, uh, no big cardio equipment, uh, no as seen on TV gadgets, okay? No matter how tempting they look, I know you want that thigh master, but I guarantee that thigh master, aside from bruising your thighs, is only gonna do one thing. It's gonna sit in the corner and collect dust, okay? So we don't want to do any of that. We're gonna choose things that are going to, the, the criteria I want your equipment to meet is versatility, okay? Uh, compact and results, okay? So how versatile is it? How good are the results you're gonna get from it? And how compact is it? How little space can we get it to take up? Uh, so we're gonna talk all about that. Let's get back in. Okay, so my top three are gonna be bands, dumbbells, and kettlebells. And I know there are a lot to choose from as far as different types of bands, different types of kettlebells. What materials are we talking about? Do we want adjustable ones? Do we want fixed ones? Uh, do we want ones with neoprene cover? Do we want all those questions? We're gonna answer in this video, so, uh, so bear with me here. We're gonna answer all those questions and which of these three or all three are gonna be right for you and your goals because it does depend on what you're trying to accomplish as well. Uh, it's not going to be the same answer for every person. But the top three are definitely going to be exercise bands, resistance bands, kettlebells, and dumbbells. Let's start with the bands. These are the absolute king when it comes to space conservation and portability. They weigh nothing, and there's a lot of different types of bands to choose from. Now, as you are shopping bands, Keep in mind there are gonna be physical therapy bands. There's going to be uh, bands that look like a giant rubber band, uh, like a big loop. And then there are going to be ones with carabiners and clips and different attachments to them. So as far as which ones to get, unless you are in physical therapy and your physical therapist has told you to get a specific physical therapy band, avoid this type of band. It is going to be way, way too light for any kind of uh, resistance training unless you're rehabbing an injured piece of you, okay? Uh, so don't get the like uh, the therapy bands. They're super thin. They're, they're very uh, light, light resistance. We don't want those ones. 
Now the ones that look like a big rubber band loop, there's a couple ways that you can use those. Uh, you can put them around your thighs to help with uh, your squat form. You can loop them around a pull-up bar to assist you with pull-ups. But the loop ones, uh, most people, most people, this may not be you if you've got really tough hands, but most people find that the grip on the loops, on the, on the big rubber band loops, is a little tough on the hands for most of the exercises you're gonna use them for. Remember, we want versatility. We want something that we can use for lateral raises, for bicep curls, for resistance on a squat, resistance on a deadlift. We want to be able to be versatile with the number of exercises we can do, shoulder presses, all these things. So for versatility's sake, I definitely recommend a band set, a band set that includes uh, the carabiners and a handle. So something like this. Um, I don't have any specific brand recommendations, but something like this is what we want. Um, so what we have in here, so the, this little bag carries 150 pounds worth of resistance. Now band resistance is a little bit different than kettlebell or dumbbell resistance. The more stretchy stretched the band is, the more resistance it gives. So it's a little bit different style of exercise but what you get in something like this is this mess here we go let me untangle the mess here so we've got uh color coded and they also do they have the the weight on them yeah so they have the the weight right next to the uh carabiner here okay so this little carabiner clip thing you can clip it on uh to a handle and yes it comes with handles so something like this clip it on there you can either anchor it or you can step on it as part of the anchor so these are very very versatile uh, you can clip multiple onto the same to get different uh, resistance increments in between or if you're getting really strong you can get all of them on there so these by far and away win for uh, least space taken up, most portability. They weigh, what, not even a pound. Um, durability, not so much. You are going to have to replace them uh, over time. You do want to inspect your bands when you, when you take them out. They will get uh, over time wear, tear, dry rot, that kind of thing. And the last thing you want to do is to be doing a set and have the band smack you in the face because it popped. And I have seen this actually happen before. It ain't pretty getting whipped with one of those things. So you do want to make sure that you take care of your bands and replace them periodically. Um, that said, they're not expensive. Uh, that set uh, that I just showed you was around 30 bucks on Amazon, something like that. Um, those are the sets that I got for our upcoming uh, giveaway for members of the Nerd Gym who are doing the social media detox challenge. So, uh, so those types of sets of bands, I highly recommend. I think everybody should have one because yeah, it doesn't take up hardly any space. Um, super convenient. All right, so that is uh, recommendation number one. Now the downsides to these uh, is actually summed up in part by the guy on the cover. I guarantee you that you are not gonna get this buff using only resistance bands. If your goal is to get super buffed out, resistance bands will get you pretty far along that journey, but at some point you're gonna have to do some traditional weight lifting. And for that, we can look at our next selections, kettlebells and dumbbells. So uh, bands really wonderful for isolation exercises and adding some extra resistance to our squats, to our deadlifts, but it's not gonna be the same as a, a traditional weight. Okay, so let's take a look. So those are the bands pros and cons. So this is the type I recommend. Pros, super portable. Cons, not super uh, durable as far as they're not going to last you for decades. And uh, you, you are going to, if you have goals for being super buff, you are going to have to graduate to weights at some point. Okay, let's talk kettlebells. All right, types, pros, and cons. So we have for kettlebells, there are plastic kettlebells, uh, plastic coated kettlebells, metal kettlebells. There are kettlebells with all kinds of different funny shapes and there are adjustable kettlebells. I will tell you that the, the kettlebells that I recommend are going to be metal. They can have coating on the base of the bell. 
Um, but I do not recommend plastic kettlebells. Definitely nothing that's coated with plastic on the handle, especially. Um, I do not recommend any type of adjustable kettlebells. And I don't recommend kettlebells that are in fun character shapes. Um, I do own uh, a, a Darth Vader, a Boba Fett, and um, an Iron Man kettlebell. They're super cute. I love them, but I cannot do a lot of kettlebell movements that I like to do in my workout with them because the shape of the bell itself gets in the way. So you don't want anything that's funny shaped. That's the same reason why you don't want to get one that is an adjustable bell. If you're going to do a kettlebell, there's uh, the advantages and disadvantages to using a kettlebell are kind of the same thing. So let's talk about advantages and disadvantages. So for types, we want something that is not plastic, especially on the handle. We want the handle to be metal, um, either like a cast iron or bare metal. Um, beyond that, you just want the shape of the, the rest of the bell to be round-ish with a flat bottom. The, the, that's the shape that you want. Okay, um, so the, the pros and cons with kettlebells. Now, con, uh, they're heavy. Uh, you're you're going to want a fairly heavy one. I generally, if you are not injured... If you are not injured, okay, and you are just getting started, um, I generally recommend at least 26 pounds uh, on your kettlebell. And again, this is the type of shape I'm talking about for your kettlebell um, for a beginner. Okay, they sell them tiny. They sell little small increments, but we don't want those ones, and I'm going to talk about why. Um, unless we are absolutely terrified of hurting ourselves and we want to get the movement in with with sort of a practice bell all right so let's take a look at uh at the pros and cons here so we want something metal we want something that is going to be a challenge for us to lift overhead when we're first starting out so if you can take your kettlebell if you get if you can go to the store and actually test we want to get a weight that we can press overhead maybe no more than 10, 15 times with two hands, and maybe up to five times, one to five times with one hand, okay? That's about how heavy we want our starting kettlebell to be. One to five reps with a single arm, 10 to 15 with two arms, okay? That's what I would recommend as far as selecting your weight goes. So if it doesn't weigh more than your purse, probably should go up a little bit. Um, now, the thing with kettlebells, they are versatile if you know how to use them. I selected some pictures here. If you can't tell me what is wrong with more than half of these pictures, chances are you need to get some training from a coach. Now there are different styles of kettlebell workouts. Uh, there is a sport style, there is a Russian hard style, which is the style that I generally teach. Um, you want to get some coaching from a professional, especially if you're going to do some of the fun dynamic movements that can be done with kettlebells. So you've probably seen kettlebell swings, kettlebell snatches, where you get this nice swinging movement and some really elegant, beautiful movements like the windmill and the Turkish get up. There are some gorgeous movements you can do with kettlebells, but they do require practice, patience, and coordination. If you are short on any of those things, practice, patience, or coordination, then maybe kettlebell isn't the right weight for you because you there is a learning curve. There is a, a period of time where, where you're gonna have to learn some different things with it. And if you're not going to learn those different things, then really the only thing that kettlebell is good for is adding some weight to your squats and your deadlifts. If you're only going to use it for squats, deadlifts, shoulder presses, and the non-dynamic movements, you do want to get even heavier with your weight selection because if you're not going to do the fun dynamic stuff, you don't need it to be extra light. Um, if you are going to get some instruction on how to use a kettlebell correctly, it is a very versatile tool. If you are not going to get instruction on how to use it correctly or you don't know how to use it correctly and you're not going to get instruction, then uh, I would skip this one. Um, so, and if you would like instruction, if you would like help with this, join the Nerd Gym, www.thenerdgym.com. I do live classes 
um, and I can help you out with that. So uh, learning things like the Russian swing and some of the more dynamic, fun movements with it makes it more versatile. And that's what we want when we're selecting items for a home gym. We want that versatility. Um, and like I said, with this, with the kettlebell, uh, you do not want to get an adjustable kettlebell, so you're, you're going to want to um, select one that is going to be versatile and challenging for a number of different movements. And understand that kettlebells are going to be more pricey than other kinds of weights, too. So usually, uh, you know, you can get dumbbells for around anywhere from a dollar to 50 cents per pound. You get them used. Um, that they last a long time, so they're, they're pretty easy to find used. Kettlebells last a long time too, so they're also easy to find used, but even a used kettlebell is gonna be around $2 per pound. So given that, I would recommend that you start with around 26 pounds if you're just beginning, 26 to 35. Uh, for most beginners is what I would recommend getting. You, you're, you're talking about a chunk of change there, and especially if you're going to get a pair of kettlebells. Now you can do a lot with a single kettlebell, with just one, quite a lot actually, uh, but doing a pair, uh, again, you're doubling your cost there. So uh, as you're looking for, if you are looking at used kettlebells, don't worry about cosmetic stuff like chips on the on the paint, that kind of stuff, don't worry about that, okay? Just make sure that it's um, a solid piece of metal uh, with a smooth, uh, solid metal handle. The base, um, this one is just spray painted orange, uh, but they are there are some with plastic coated bases or rubber coated bases, that's fine, doesn't matter, as long as the handle itself is metal or uh, cast iron and, uh, and the body of the bell is solid, that's what we want out of our kettlebell. Okay, so kettlebells, uh, pros, they're, they're fun to work with, cons, they do t there is a learning curve, uh, they tend to be a little bit more expensive, that's what I would talk about with kettlebells. And can we just take a moment to appreciate this truly weird stock photograph that I found, uh, just, you know, like I, I use Canva to put together these little slideshows or whatever, and they have a bunch of stock photos, and this is just why this was in there, just with all of the other kettlebell stuff, I don't know. Who is this man? Why did he make this image, or why did his friend make this image of him as a kettlebell in the middle of this barren wasteland? I don't know, but I just wanted to share that with you because uh, I thought that was uh, fun, and it's going to haunt my dreams, and I want it to haunt your dreams too. Moving on! Dumbbells! 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 Okay, so dumbbells uh, these are, these are fabulous. Okay, so dumbbells, classic piece of workout equipment. You can do, uh, quite a lot of different things with dumbbells. I would say they are, they are probably, they win for best, most versatility. Okay, most versatility, winner. Um, as far as what types of dumbbells to get, there are ones with neoprene coating, there are ones with uh, rubber ends, there are um, adjustable dumbbells. If you're going to get an adjustable, an adjustable dumbbell set, I do recommend one with the little weight plates that you can screw on here. Now these ones do have some limitations in how you can hold them, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Um, so, so doing a stackable set of dumbbells um, or an adjustable set of dumbbells does limit some of the movements or some of the ways of holding them that you can do. Um, the ones that I recommend the most are the ones that are pictured right in front here. The hexagon shape makes them stable for things like if you're going to do a renegade row where you are holding on to them with the weights on the floor, they're not going to roll out from underneath you. Um, they are going to be nice and solid. They're going to last a long time. And uh, I prefer uh, the, the knurling grip here. The knurling grip uh, lasts a long time and it's going to be nice and uh, easy to hold as well. Okay, so what uh, we're looking at with dumbbells. So a dumbbell like this, knurling, that kind of thing. The, the hexagon shape makes it easy for things like uh, goblet squats and different types of holds that you can do with it. Now, if you're getting a fixed dumbbell, meaning that it, this, is, this is 10 pounds and it will always be 10 pounds, I cannot add nor subtract weight to it. If we're getting a fixed dumbbell, make sure that it is something that you cannot overhead press more than five times. If you're just gonna get one 
or a pair to start off with. So this one, this is one of a larger set that I have. Um, I can do a lot of reps with this. I wouldn't get this as my, I wouldn't have this one as my only, as my only dumbbell or as my only set of dumbbells. Like I said, when you're selecting, if you can do overhead presses, uh, test out something that you can do no more than five reps with as your starting weight. That will be the most versatile. You'll be able to do the most things for upper and lower body with it. And then you can start adding to your weight collection um, forward and backward of that. So dumbbells, they take up very, very little space. They are the most versatile as far as the, the number of different exercises you can do with them. Uh, they are beginner friendly. The learning curve on dumbbells is very, very short for most exercises, things like curls and presses and squats and deadlifts and stiff leg deadlifts. All these things are fabulous with dumbbells. So I would say that dumbbells for most people are my number one pick. And there's no excuse not to have a, a set of workout bands too. So dumbbells and, and uh, exercise bands, those two you should definitely have in your small space for your home gym. Um, and then kettlebell, yes, if you're willing to put in the work to learn how to use it correctly. Otherwise, it again will become a dust collector and just be taking up space. So those are my top picks. Um, Let's see, any honorary mentions? I suppose jump rope would be an honorary mention for me. Now, the, the reason why jump rope didn't make it on this list is number one, there's a bunch of body weight cardio exercises that you can do. You don't really need any equipment for that. You don't need a bike, you don't need a treadmill. Uh, all you need is your own body weight for cardio exercise. Jump ropes are super fun to keep you engaged for a longer period of time, provided number one, you can jump and you're not carrying a lot of extra body weight that can make that high risk. Um, but the jump rope does require ceiling space and space in front of and behind you. So while it doesn't take up any space while it's not in use, so that in that sense, it makes a, a good choice for use in small spaces, but you do actually have to have enough space for the jump rope to turn <laughs> for it to make sense in a small space. So I hope that you found that helpful. Let me know what your exercise questions are. Uh, you can pop them in the comments down here. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. I try to put out uh, live videos at least several times per week, if not every day. Um, and uh, you can let me know your questions. If you're a member of the Nerd Gym, go ahead and message me in Patreon. If you are not yet a member of the Nerd Gym, you can go ahead and join www.patreon.com or thenerdgym.com. That will take you to our Patreon page. Um, and sign up for the membership level that's right for you. We have uh, live exercise classes, private live exercise classes for members only. We've got uh, nutrition plans. I'm a sports nutritionist. I can help you find the right nutrition plan that's right for you. I can help you set up your home gym and get you exercising, working out. Uh, we've got morning and evening classes six days per week. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. Highly recommend. Uh, and I can show you how to use all the stuff. So, all right. If you have any questions, like I said, pop them down in the comments. And I will see you next time.